I was counting on one. What's your emergency? I have a home invasion. My niece is tied up. I am at the verge of untying my niece at this particular moment. Okay, she's tied up. She is tied up and gagged. And gagged? Oh, so yes, ma'am. Okay. I am untying her. Um, is there anybody else there? Is anybody else here? Where are the kids? The kids. We have five small infants asleep. Five small infants asleep? Yes, ranging from seven to one. Seven to one years old? Okay, ma'am. You're saying that they hit her husband in the face about five times with the butt of a pencil and drug him out. They drug him out? Yes, ma'am. Can I talk to her? Is she able to speak? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Hello? Hi, Samantha. I know you're upset. What is, uh, what is, what is your husband's name? Are you sicker? In the early morning hours of February 20th, 2015, Titus County Sheriff's Office authorities rushed to the residence of Ernie Ibarra and Samantha Walford after receiving a distressed call from Samantha's aunt, claiming that her niece had been tied up and gagged by intruders. The intruders had also kidnapped her niece's husband, Ernie Ibarra, after attacking him brutally. At the scene, police officers noticed that the door was completely smashed from the outside and the house was in disarray, although there weren't any clear signs of a robbery taking place. Then they found Samantha and her aunt standing at the bottom of the spiral stairs. Samantha seemed petrified and visibly shaken. She still put your she she still had questions for me before I get you off the phone. Let me have it and I'll take care of it and you talk to them. You talk to me. I don't know. Uh, so, so walk me through what happened. I don't honestly know what happened. I was in bed asleep, and we heard a noise, and the second I was able to open my eyes, somebody grabbed me and jerked me out of bed and slammed me down on the ground and started tying me up. The fact that Samantha's husband was solely targeted and that both Samantha and her children were left unharmed seemed extremely suspicious to the police. This was made more suspicious by the fact that nothing was stolen from the home, making it difficult for the detectives to establish a motive for this crime. They had black masks on, black shirts, black pants, every inch of skin was covered by uh, gloves. I couldn't see anything. One of them did say the name Luke, but that's it. That was all. And when they dragged me downstairs, because they had to head downstairs and they were separating us, I went downstairs and his face was covered in blood. <laughs> and he kept the top of his head. At this point, the police officers start to get more and more suspicious of Samantha. She seems to recall specific details like the cuts on Ernest's head and the blood dripping, all while claiming that the room was pitch black. Do you remember what kind of, what the gun looked like? You used to see it just so I didn't focus on the gun, I was focused on him. Do you remember what colors, anything? Like <laughs> it's a black gun. Okay. He said, look at her, and he wouldn't look up at How's, me. How's the baby? He's rolling me to sleep, they didn't run mess with the kids. And then he asked, how are my kids? Where are my kids? He said, he punched him in the mouth with the gun, and then I ain't here for no kids, mother And I think they both have not a couple of his teeth out. And they jerked his hair up and said, look at her, look at her. And they had my head pulled back. And he looked at me and he said, that's the last time you're going to see her. And do you want us to kill her too? The police officers would now ask Samantha to take them upstairs and show them exactly where she was at the time this was happening. Having a visual of how the crime took place allows them to put the pieces together and to figure out if Samantha's recount of the incident makes sense. She helped the time. How, how'd she find out that you were? Because they, they took his phone, but this is where Samantha's story starts to crumble. The detectives and the officers at the scene are finding it hard to believe that the intruders would leave her phone on her, giving her an opportunity to call the police and get themselves arrested. So I was able to... So he's got his phone? No, they have his phone. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. What's his phone number? You don't know her? Do you got it stored in your phone? Yeah. 
Okay, look at this. Look. Huh? Well, I need that. Samantha had revealed that her husband's phone was on him when they kidnapped him. This is a vital piece of information, as it could allow the officers to track his phone and find his location. However, when they tried this, they found out that Ernest's phone wasn't communicating with any cell phone towers nearby, meaning that the phone was more than likely switched off. That's what I expect I see a lot more. Because, I mean, she's saying he got hit several times with a pistol whip or whatever, several times with a black pistol sauce. Everybody's wearing all black. Like, you know. I didn't find the worst on them. She was in a total She was in a total black room. The lack of blood at the scene was not the only thing that alarmed the detectives. In order to get to her room from the door to the staircase, there is about 20 feet of space. Bear in mind they were in complete darkness. It is extremely unlikely for the intruders to get to Samantha before she would have time to react. Samantha reluctantly agrees to come down to the local police station for an interview. This is where the detectives would try and lock her into a story while at the same time trying to get her to share more information that she may be hiding. What I am is I'm, a, I'm pretty much what they consider an expert in this field. I've worked a lot of these. I'm looking at these, okay, in case I'm saying, I've been acting on a crime scene. Look, and this is why it's very important how you move to be. Polished because I'm gonna tell you what, the evidence we're found on the scene is just not matching. A lot of the times when stuff like this happens, the spouse or the girlfriend or whatever, there's more than one on We always find out because they always get together. Oh, well, this is a story we'll tell you. You stick to it, don't you change? Well, actually, that's kind of the best thing they have to do us because then when you stick to your story like that yeah, and then we piece it in the end all together, then it's real easy to take this to a jury and show that either you were a liar. You are the loving wife that you said you were. I'm not going to care to tell you I'm a loving wife. We've had our build up. Now, I'm not saying we've had our fight. So, what about the blood? Now, how, were you up close with him when they punched him? Yes. Okay, so you think there may be some blood on Well, I didn't, you know, inspect for right. well, splatter or anything like that when they jerked me away from him and cut my clothes off. I never touched him. So, it's possible that so there may be. But is it because I laid my hands on him? No, my hands were tied behind my back. When and I'm watching this guy punch him in the face with the guy over and over. How did it make you feel? Horrible. Okay. Make you feel glad? Or no, if I ever acted out and hurt anybody? No. And you can look at my record on that. Now, when they cut your shirt off of you, how, I mean, was it violent or did they just yes. take their time? And just no, well, they jerked it out and started slashing at it with this apparently dull box cutter and then when it didn't work ripped it off over my head and threw it to the side look me in the face i need to know the truth did you have anything to do with her disappearance no and I did you have it. anything to do with his death no, no. death that's what i'm trying to find out did yes if he is dead you think, no do you think he's alive i did hope so did you have anything to do with it no you had nothing to do with his no. disappearance if God forbid he is found deceased, did you have anything to do with it? No. Did you hire someone to do it? No. You had nothing, absolutely nothing to do with it. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, I really, really don't want him to play the funeral for my husband. After meeting in a tattoo shop in 2008, Samantha and Ernie began dating. Samantha, already a mother of two, ends up having three more children with Ernie and the pair wed in 2014. From the outside, everything seemed perfect and the pair seemed to be in a stable, happy relationship. But digging further into their lives, things were not going well. Ernie was now working two jobs to support the family of seven, running back manufacturing machines during the day and working at a Little Caesar pizza at night. 
Believing it would generate extra income, Samantha started a YouTube channel. Her videos discussed her passions and topical issues, as well as doing family vlogs and makeup tutorials. Hey guys, I'm just kind of posting a vlog about what's been going on with me, why I have like totally abandoned my YouTube channel. And I just wanted to post this video for all those women who think that having a child at a as a teen would be something smart to do. It almost made me want to be a cop. Yeah, it's great. Um, of course, I'm not a big <laughs> fan of cops. One, two, three, go. And I never really understood what the deal was about the gaming birds. And he is a blue fronted Amazon. Always wanted to be an actress. I think it is so much fun. One of the most amazing forms of art ever to be able to express yourself that way. But as time went on, her videos slowly became darker and darker as she started to complain more about her life and especially about her relationship with Ernie. Hey YouTubers. Today a lot of shit pissed me off so you guys get to listen to it. This does not have a whole lot to do with this pregnancy and that sucks. I'm kind of screwed as far as dating goes because I date losers. She felt like this was going somewhere and over time she started paying less attention to her children and acted as if her YouTube channel was more important to her than her own family. And this was frustrating to those around her, especially Ernest. What do you think of me making YouTube videos? Well, I guess I don't mind. It takes up a lot of time. Not gonna light a cigarette? Oh yeah, I forgot about it. Because you got that fucking iPad in your hands. Oh, where, 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 where? At least you're paying attention. But only because of this fucking hilarious ass episode. But no, here's the thing, Sam. Here's the thing, Sam. The thing is. The more the detective pushes her for answers, the more information she starts to give voluntarily. Despite what the detective is telling her, if she did know about this attack and the people involved in it before the incident, Samantha would officially go from being a scared victim of a home invasion to an accomplice. Uh, what, what this guy say? What this guy say? He's gonna do? Handle the situation. 
So if he did this, how, who do you think he'd bring with him? Any of his friends. But yesterday at the hospital, he had a guy that I do know from town with him. His name is Tay. Who? Tay Rhymes. Tay? Tay. He's I black. Tay Rhymes, he's a black male? Yes. Could he hit him with him? Where's he from? I didn't say yet. Yes, he had him at the hospital with him. I cannot guarantee that these are the right people. But you know what? I know that you know what you're about, Sam. You know. You know. You know this guy did it. You know he did it. And, and, and here's the thing. But why? It, but unless here's, here's he's got serious you psychological better. issues, why? Well, what I don't did you say? Anything. What did you say when he said he's going to take care of that problem? I just laughed at him. I thought he was joking. So now all of a sudden, why are you bringing him out? Because you know that it was him. Because why do you know it was him? Because of his prison record and because, I don't know. I just have this feeling like it was. There was another guy, I don't know his name, but he pretty much fits the bill of the third time. There was three people? I, yes, at the house, there was three people. And at the hospital yesterday, if you can look at the cameras, there was three people. He is a very scary looking guy, the third guy. But you don't know who he is? No. You don't know his name? No, they, called, they kept calling him JoJo. And I asked John what his name was, and he said Jose. But that's all I know about that guy. Is up at the hospital now. What room is she in? 218. Um, is she there now? She should be. She was okay. last night. When the detectives arrived at the hospital, they managed to find both Jonathan Sanford and Jose Ponce. Octavius Rhymes, however, was nowhere to be seen. They continued to arrest both Jonathan and Jose as they took them back to the police station for an interview. Let's, let's go through this. What I need to do, I've got Samantha's version. You tell me from the very beginning what happened. Just give me your side of the story. What was said, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Because, yeah, right now, oh yeah, you're the, you're the bad guy right now. Jonathan pulls me to the side. Take a, let me talk to him. I don't know what's up. He said, oh, I just need your help. He said, it's, it's a three-man job. I said, okay, well, what is it? He said, look, I've already got, and this is, and I put this on my life, on my son's life. I've already got the layout of the whole house. Uh, you know, the room was upstairs and this and that. And uh, I said, okay. And uh, he said, we're gonna make it look like a home invasion. Samantha is the ring. Samantha is the one, and I can prove this. I you don't believe me? As God's my witness, all you have to do, you, you can take you and, and 15 of the officers, I don't care. Take me in front of my wife, and my wife will tell you, a piece of what she overheard. Well, now, I actually kind of heard. And my wife will tell you, she's the one who orchestrated it. I specifically brought up, what if the law start questioning you about it? Talking about her, talking about uh, Samantha. And Samantha said, and I quote, I'm an actress. I, I, I can make anybody believe anything. Number 14, I've always wanted to be an actress. I think it is so much fun. I've been extras in movies. I've had small parts in, in uh, like short films and I've done plays. I think it is so much fun and it is so beautiful. It is the one of the most amazing forms of art ever to be able to express yourself that way. I think it's amazing. Jonathan Sanford and Jose Ponce were asked to guide the officers to the location of Ernest's body. After kidnapping Ernest, Sanford informed the officers that they took him to the woods where they brutally beat him and then shot him, leaving his naked body in the woods. Definitely did. Okay, what we need to do now. Oh yeah, he's dead, he's not gonna be alive. 
Days later, the detectives managed to locate Octavius Rhymes in Camp County, 24 miles from where the murder took place. When the detectives looked at Samantha's phone records, they found out that she was having frequent communications over text with all three of the perpetrators, discussing the plan of the staged home invasion and also talking about how not to get caught. This, alongside the confessions of both Jonathan and Jose, was enough to arrest all four perpetrators for the murder of Ernest Ibarra. Jose Ponce, who was the shooter, and Jonathan Sanford reportedly entered guilty pleas in April 2016 and received 50-year jail terms each. That same year, in December, Octavius Rhymes went on trial. He was found guilty on all charges and received a sentence of 93 years in prison in October 2017. Samantha Walford was put on trial and she received a sentence of 99 years in jail.